Christian with First Updates Now, here with Team 5557, the BB Raiders. They just competed at the Orlando Regional. They're here at 179's shop to get some practice in before the Rocket City Regional. I'm here with Joey, Eli, and Danny. They're here to talk about the robots on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, I'm going to hand it off to Joey. He's going to talk about the strategy they had for this year's robot. So going into this year, we knew that we wanted to be small and fast. Um, however, the design you see currently isn't the initial thing we started with. So initially, we wanted to have an over-the-bumper intake when we first went into it and a lower pivoting shooter so that we could fit under the stage easier and shoot from under the stage. However, we realized that was not what we ended up wanting to do. So we transitioned over to towards an under-the-bumper intake with a higher pivot for mainly for the amp at first since we think it's way easier to get into the amp from a higher angle than from a lower angle. So um, for our shooter, we designed, uh, we wanted to be able to intake and having our resting position uh, be our intake position. Uh, our side plates, we made them out, use Delrin, uh, very strong, we can cut it in house, which is very useful for us. And um, we also, um, we started down here with our feeder rollers. So as a note comes in through the intake, it's fed up by these and it's detected by uh, a B brake. And um, the, uh, what happens next is uh, our flywheel spins up and um, we had added a flywheel because it was important to us to have uh, a good amount of inertia to be able to, um, like to, while we're shooting. Um, and we, we went with having uh, larger wheels on one side than the other um, so that it, the note got proper spin as it's being shot into the speaker. Um, our pivot point over here um, is driven by two chains. And our up, our up position, our amp position. Our amp position is here, and as we shoot it down into the amp, um, yeah, that's kind of how that's how we do the amp. So um, something that was very important for us is we wanted to keep it very simple, and so by having that one uh, degree of freedom, really allowed us to keep it really simple and. Uh, when we're shooting into the amp. So going more into the general design of our intake, we knew we wanted a 26, it worked 26 by 24 without the under the bumper intake. And we knew we wanted that full width intake since when you're intaking notes, you're gonna be all the way across the field. So what was important to us was the centering into the shooter. So this piece right over here is our bearing centering piece. And we saw a lot of teams were posting on Chief Delphi about experimenting with bearings, except not a lot of them were finding success. So we decided we wanted to try it and see how it would work for us. And this is the second iteration of that, actually. It used to go way further into the chassis, I'm sorry, into the intake about here-ish, but we decided to shorten it because what happens is once a note is going in, it'll essentially get hit by the Neo when it comes in on the side, which will allow it to go more towards the center of the rock. You can move for a second. So if we intake on the right side, the bearings essentially push it into place compared to when it's just in the center and it goes in on its own. We also switched over towards poly belt instead of actual belts over here so that we can get lower to the ground since the pulleys, when they're super low to the ground, can crack and any we don't want to risk that. So the poly belt, we have two on the front roller and one on the back roller, which actually helps with grip on the note on its own. And that's why we position them in those places. So as far as programming goes, um, it's a relatively simple robot to program just because we're we've got one degree of freedom, so we don't have to re really worry about collisions at all. Um, so we kind of went more advanced and more in depth into a lot of the control systems we're doing. So for Swerve, 
um, we're running our odometry at a higher frequency uh, than um, the rest of the robot code to get uh, more frequent odometry updates and hoping for more consistency on the field for auto. Um, in addition, um, our arm is motion profiled um, and characterized using SysID and that, that allows us to, to optimize how fast our arm is able to rotate and get into position to score as quickly as possible. Um, in addition to that, uh, if you go into coast mode, Eli, we're, I don't know if this got showed off already, but we're, we climb with these hooks right here under our shooter. Um, and so it's just PID getting us back down when we climb. Um, in addition to that, we felt very limited at Orlando and South Florida because we were essentially running manually uh, everything. So we had a set point for shooting up against the subwoofer and then shooting from the podium and our driver would have to manage that on his own. Um, but in the last week, we've added vision for Rocket City. We've got two cameras. There are Ardu cams um, going to an orange pie over here that's running photon vision. And um, we're, we've seen that we've been able to get really accurate odometry and it's, it's very steady and, um, and it basically allows us to pick, a, pick wherever we are on the field and shoot from that exact point. Uh, and that, that's been super important for us because it's decreased cycle times, it reduces misses, and then it also allows us to um, line up to the amp automatically. So on our driver's controller, he has a button to snap to the correct rotation for the amp, in addition to a modifier button that will drive him automatically to the amp scoring position. And it's doing all that based on the, the April tags around him. Um, and then one last thing is we have um, LEDs on our robot only well one of these is like got unwired at Orlando but um, they they they're able to communicate with the driver so in in certain scenarios like right now we're disabled um, and so we know where the red alliance um, it also when we have a note the the lights will start strobing green enable. indicating that we have a note and then if Joey goes to a set point it'll stay solid green to indicate to us that we're ready to shoot. Um, so yeah, uh, when, when we have an April tag and it's using April tag, it, it's also uh, will indicate to the driver, which is helpful for when we're crossing the field and we may not have the most accurate odometry to, um, to allow them to know when the robot has kind of converged on its true pose on the field. Um, so all that combined has, has allowed us to really improve our cycle times and, um, and get us where we want. And then uh, one last thing we, uh, we're looking to add for Rocket City is a, uh, a trap mechanism. So if you go coast again, um, what we've been trying is inverting our shooter and um, feeding the note out through our feeder, which allows us to get more height and more accuracy when shooting into the trap uh, than teams who are just shooting from all the way from their normal shooting position. And um, one thing we want to add, uh, based on inspiration from um, Windham Windup and 4028, is, uh, is a leaf blower type mechanism that will strap to the side of our shooter and blow the trap open. Um, since our feeder wheels don't necessarily have enough force to push open the trap by itself, that should allow for the note to just kind of settle in by itself. Um, so that, that is an addition we're looking to add in the next couple of days. And yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, you guys performed awesome at Orlando and South Florida, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys' performance at the Rocket City Regional. This is Christian Olson with Behind the Bumpers, signing off. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.